Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where you will be encouraged, informed, and empowered to embrace your dreams and advance in life through authorship. I'm your host, best-selling author, certified leadership trainer, and book enthusiast, Dom Brightman. Be sure to check out the goods and services from every guest, as well as some of the books from yours truly, the host. Now let the fun begin. And today on the Going North podcast, we're bringing some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is no different. Today is no different because we got another special lady in the building today, baby. An award winning international public speaker, best selling author, audiobook producer, and six time entrepreneur. You heard that right, folks. Six time entrepreneur. So this lady has a six pack abs in business. She's the creator of Entrepreneurs Rocket Fuel, an active community of entrepreneurs looking to contribute, connect, and grow with other entrepreneurs. Her vision is to inspire all entrepreneurs to achieve the genius in whatever way that is. And outside the business world, she's a mom of two and an adventure seeker that's hiked sections of the Pacific Crest Trail, navigated class four rapids with one of Costa Rica's female Olympic medal award-winning white water champions along with a bunch of other magical adventures. So let's give it up for the one, the only, KH yourself, Kimberly Hobshot. How you doing today, ma'am? Super excited to be here, Tom. Really good to be here with you and your audience. Okay, good, good, good. I'm like, oh, come on. It's not Friday the 13th. Why is the tech <laughs> acting stupid? <laughs> no worries. It's all about audio, right? <laughs> yep, I blame the cacti. Yep, all the cactuses with all their needles and their water oh. hidden. All right. Yeah, I've just got to blame the cactus. But back with all introductions, there are some stuff that's behind the resume that folks always forget. So mind filling in any cavities I missed about the wonderful Special K yourself? Well, thank you for asking, Dom. I have a personal love for authors because authors oftentimes are people who have this great story and they are one of the few human beings who actually Go to, the, go to the mat and actually share their story. There are so many people that I meet that have a story inside them or they say, I am 90% done with my book and 90% done is also known as not done. And the people who are authors and published authors have a special place in my heart because they actually did get their content out in the world to share with people and allow them to see their true genius. Sweet, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. Because got a lot of folks out there with genius that stays buried underground and heck, even with the book, it stays buried underground. So it's good you're helping folks <laughs> come from <laughs> the ground and get some air. <laughs> that's right. But I think the saying, don't die with the music inside you is a really good one. And if you are an author and you have something to get out, a message to get out there, or if you're an entrepreneur and you have a message to get out, if you are not being seen, you're being overlooked and your message isn't going to get out there and have the impact that you were brought here on this earth to make. So if you go all the, the distance and actually make it happen in whatever way you can, then you have my respect. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because it takes all sorts of dedication. Yeah. So one of the things that I do in addition to Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel and helping people get their books finished instead of just it as ideas is really help them turn that into a new medium and earn money from a book that they created and get a wider audience and a, a new stream of revenue by creating audiobooks. And the story behind that is really interesting how I, I got involved in audiobooks and it, it is a story into and of itself. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about indeed. Heck, funny enough, I hear that you actually turned your son into an audiobook narrator too. <laughs> Absolutely. So the story goes that I, I was actually spent, even though I'm an entrepreneur and a six-time entrepreneur, I did spend quite a good deal of time in corporate, climbing the corporate ladder, working for a Fortune 1000 company and putting in my time and, and growing and developing and becoming an executive director 
director and found myself after 15 years in pretty much golden handcuffs. My husband at the time was very fond of my paycheck and didn't want for me to quit. And I was very, very unhappy. And I actually stayed for another two years before I was able to train my replacement and then uh, go full-time as an entrepreneur. And when I went full-time as an entrepreneur, I had already had some businesses on the side, but they were a small businesses that I had sold. And I didn't really have anything to step directly into. So I went to friends and family and asked them what they thought I might do as a, a full-time entrepreneur to create a large business. And of course, meaning well, they all suggested they said, Kimberly, you were so good at what you did in corporate. Why don't you just do that? And I thought, oh, you know, they're right. I am good at that. So I rebuilt a business on my own doing exactly what I did at corporate and woke up about 18 months later with a seven figure business, a bunch of employees who were counting on me for paychecks and realized that I was just as unhappy as I had been when I was working for somebody else. Only now I had created my very own little version of that. And it was a, <laughs> it was not a good day to wake up and realize that I really didn't like what I was doing and I had created it myself. That was a very difficult time. I had what Brene Brown calls a spiritual awakening or a breakdown. <laughs> and I was very disappointed in myself for having done that. I knew that I had built it myself brick by brick. And what a shame that was that I was so super unhappy in it. And at that time, my son came to me. He was going into summer and he was entering the summer at 15 and a half, which is a really bad age in the States to enter summer because you're too young to get a summer job and work at Baskin Robbins or wherever. And you're also, in my son's case, he felt he was too old to go back to summer camp, right? Because that's for babies and he was taller than all the camp counselors. And he was saying to me, I'm just not going to do that. So I said, well, you know, you're never too young or too old to be an entrepreneur. So why don't we create a business around something you absolutely love to do? And we'll just put in all the great stuff that you love to do into Google, as any good parent would do, and we'll see what comes up. And we did. We, and he's very charismatic. He loves children, was on in drama, does great voices, and, and loves playing around with kids. And they, they up popped, why don't you become an audiobook narrator and narrate audiobooks for authors? And he looked at me and I looked at him and he said, can we do that? And I said, it sounds like it. So we gave him a little bit of a startup budget and I taught him everything about marketing and finding customers and order flow and, and producing audiobooks and everything that we needed to know in order to grow a whole little business. And it took off like gangbusters. Sweet. Mompreneur level 99, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we actually got to a point where we had too much business. We had more business than we could handle. We actually had authors coming out of our friends and family and just everywhere out of the woodwork saying, can you narrate our audiobooks for us? And we had too much. It takes a long time to narrate an audiobook. And it, 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 we had so much business that we couldn't handle it all. And so we started training other people and hiring other narrators to do audiobooks themselves. And then we became an audiobook production company. We helped authors narrate their own audiobooks. We taught people how to become audiobook narrators. We actually taught a class at a local adult school on how to become an audiobook narrator and voiceover artist. And then we took that online and taught people online how to become an audiobook narrator and voiceover artist. And we started giving classes and it was such fun. And we built our business even larger. We were able to handle more business. And now we don't narrate, we just connect authors with narrators or we help the authors narrate their own audiobooks. So some of your listeners may be interested in creating their own audiobook either by self narrating or by hiring a narrator, a professional narrator to do it for them. And that's what we do. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about right there. Because folks need that, especially if they want to reach the folks who can't see their words. They may be blind. They need to hear it. You've got a good point there, Dom. It is a, certainly a niche for the blind where it's a, a great resource for them. But it turns out that about 30% of the population likes to read books. They like to curl up with a 
nice, good book. They like the way it smells. They like the way it feels in their hand and they love reading a book. And oftentimes those are authors as well. Then you have people who really don't have the time to read and they won't purchase your book. They're looking for your book in a different medium. They're looking for your book in audio. And if your book isn't in audio, you can't serve them with the value that you have and you can't gain that wider audience. And then about a third of the people will have either a book or an audiobook. So you want to be sure that you have that other medium available for the content that you have to get out into the world so that you can reach a wider audience. Amen to that. Cause I was listening to a podcast where the guy was talking about how books are too slow for him now that he listens to podcasts up to 2.0 speed, sometimes even 4.0 speed. Wow, that 4.0 speed is, is an interesting way to do that. Um, 4.0 speed is very, very fast for that kind of content, but it's true. You can, it's sort of like speed reading. They can speed up the listening on what uh, most, most audiobook listeners listen on a, an app called Audible. Not that I'm promoting that, but it is used by about 90 to 95% of audiobook listeners are estimates. They sort of, um, they sort of won the game. They are the Amazon affiliate and they, they have most of the content there. They won that, that battle, if you will. <laughs> oh yeah, you can say that again. They definitely won the battle because that's really, <laughs> unless you get it from the person's website, good luck finding anything else. Of course, there's like LibriVox, but those are for books that aren't so much new. <laughs> That's true. And there's uh, Overdrive. You can actually get audiobooks from your local library now. Uh, so you can get audiobooks in a variety of different ways. Um, but you're right, the, the, the books on tape and CDs that we used to have, I don't even know. Do you have a CD player in your car anymore uh, or a tape player? I don't even know if those exist anymore. A CD player, yes. And I check out a lot of audiobooks on CD. It's just that yeah. since my car is 10 years old, it mm. likes to be finicky with certain CDs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, it, I can give you a few statistics if you're, you think your audience would be interested in that. Uh, who doesn't like numbers? All right. Well, audiobooks is a growing market. It's actually, last I checked, it's a $2.6 billion industry. Uh, but not only that, it's actually the most growing segment of the industry. Year over year growth, the paperback and hardback segments, they're traditionally relatively flat. Ebooks, unfortunately, are on the decline in revenue because so many of them are available for free or 99 cents. But audiobooks are seeing double digit growth year over year. And if you have a book, your book has audio rights. It's about time that you exercise those rights. Not only that, only about 95% uh, uh, only about 5% of books are created as audiobooks. The other 95% are not even in audiobook format. So that means that if you turn your book into an audiobook, you have eliminated 19 out of 20 of your competition. <laughs> because, you, right? Because you, you have entered the creme de la creme, the people who only produce the audiobooks are in that top 5%. How cool is that? That's right. That's cooler than five cucumbers. Forget the one cucumber. I know, right? <laughs> and then it also creates a new revenue stream. You already have done the work and it was a lot of work. If you're an author, you know it was a ton of work to get that book created. Once you've created it, you might as well exercise all the revenue streams you possibly can from it and gather a new audience. There are potential fans out there that just you know, they just don't have the time and they don't choose to sit down and read books. Many of them grab their books, both business books and fiction when they're on the go, but they can't read your physical book while they're on the move. So it's an opportunity for you to get a revenue stream that you can't get if you're only in print. Yep. It is so true. Heck, even one of our past guests, Riley too, and you mentioned how that's the gold mine that so many authors neglect because he made thousands of dollars off of his book being in audiobook form, heck, even before the regular book was out because of some KDP issues. Interesting. Very interesting. We found that when you publish an audiobook, also just talking about the audiobook can lead to additional sales from your regular book as well. Uh, because you're talking about it and people are like, oh, I remember I meant to pick that up. And if it's not out yet, if you're announcing that the audiobook is coming soon, then people can buy your actual book 
as well. So it's a great opportunity to have more discussion about a book that you've already created. Oh, yes, indeed. I have, one, I have one really cool final statistic for you, and then we'll get off of numbers and just talk about other stuff. But for your, I'll, I'll just play with you. For your listeners, um, you can think about this along the way as well. Industry statistics are actually pretty disappointing for the number of people, the percentage of people that actually finish your paper book. If you have a physical book, how many, what percentage of the people do you think will actually finish all the way to the words, the end? <laughs> oh God, I'll say 37%. 37. Good guess. It's actually 10%. 10%. The market research has shown that audiobook listeners get all the way to the end uh, much, much more frequently. Um, with, uh, with the books at 10%, what do you think that the audiobooks are? Uh, probably nonfiction, business type of books, I imagine. And what, what percentage of the people do you think finish that book, if it's an audiobook? Huh. Oh, probably close to 90 and above, I imagine. Yeah, very good. It's upwards of 80% of the time. Uh, in fact, when we did our market research, it was between 90 and 95% of audiobook listeners will finish the book all the way through. And you can actually measure it, right? Because there are ways that you can see that because they're, they're listening to it digitally. So you can tell specifically what percentage of them are finishing the book uh, at the statistic level. So it is upwards of 80% of the time that they'll finish the book all the way to the end. So if you're, if you're a speaker or a coach or an entrepreneur or somebody who's a teacher and you have this book and you want the actual content to get into the minds or lives or worlds of your fans, audiobooks are going to give you a much higher chance of actually accomplishing that goal it, and, and getting the content really into them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Getting into their minds. <laughs> that's right. They can fall asleep with a book, but they fall asleep with you over their ears. They can't escape. Tell them <laughs> A lot of people do say they fall asleep listening to audiobooks. I find it so entertaining that I don't usually fall asleep. It it's usually keeps my mind awake. But many people do experience like that. It's just a nice way to drift off. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. And then you sell them a $20,000 program at the end. Wouldn't that be great? Times. I need to put that subliminally at the very back end. Heck yeah. That's right. Then they just, first thing they do, they wake up, they go straight to the computer, to their website, all the rocket fuel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mine now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of rocket fuel, my goodness. So we had our chat a few weeks ago and I, uh, just joined the Facebook group and got all of this equipment. I felt like I went to an arms dealer. Like what <laughs> led to you just starting Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel and helping it to get to where it is and heck, even where it's going? Because it's like a massive amount of value in being a part of that group. Thank you for that. I created Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel because I had hit that sort of crisis where I didn't really want to do the business uh, that I was in. And I, I thought, what do I really want to create in the world? What is more important to me than just making money or just, you know, marking time until we're gone? And, and creating audiobooks is a lot of fun. And I did that as a as sort of a side business with my son. It was really enjoyable. And it is a very thriving business right now. We've created over 100 audiobooks. But the, the really cool thing about being here in this world is that we're all here to make a difference in other people's lives. So how can we do that? And when I took a real hard look at it, I thought, you know, I'd really love to inspire entrepreneurs to be able to take the leap in a safe way and enjoy the ride and enjoy the journey and get the support they need in order to get to the next level. And Entrepreneurs Rocket Fuel is only a community. It's a community of entrepreneurs helping each other get to that next level. And if you're an entrepreneur, you're welcome to join. It's free to join and then uh, interact with the community. And, and if you're having trouble with SEO or you're having trouble with Facebook or you don't know how to make your tech work, then you can certainly reach out to the community and somebody will have that expertise. And additionally, if you are a tech person or SEO or anything, whatever you are, when you come into the community, you can contribute and also receive. And I, I love that about the world of 
tech now and, and the world of Facebook and the world of the internet. And even though we're inside our homes, it can be an opportunity for you to reach out in a social way to be able to connect and get the answers you need. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about because folks need community, especially the extroverts like yourself, right? <laughs> I do consider myself an extrovert. Uh, uh, funny yeah. enough, when I was working in corporate, I was working primarily with introverts most of the time. So I have uh, a, a soft place in my heart for those that are introverted as well. All right, sweet. I'm in. All right, good. Yes, indeed. Believe it or not. <laughs> Let me stop. But yes, indeed. So this, since this is far from your first ever podcast interview, and I'm pretty sure there are all sorts of topics you don't get to cover. Is there a topic you wish that you get to cover more often when you're in the interviewee mode? Well, I always say that if you are an entrepreneur and the best kept secret, that one of the things that you need to do as quickly as possible is get seen. So if you're not being seen, you're being overlooked. If you're not being heard, your message is not getting out there. And if you're not clear on your message, then it's not going to have the impact that you want it to have in the world before we leave this place. And I, just like we said earlier, don't die with the music inside you. Make sure that it gets out there in a big way and people are seeing it and being able to get your message because we all are here to contribute in some way. And don't let time or, or other priorities get you distracted from being able to give your message. Nice, because there are so many darn distractions out there as is. Yeah. The other thing I, I suggest to entrepreneurs is really I'd love for you to show up in a way that is authentic and honest. We are all struggling with many different things. We all have fear and, you know, just taking the courage to be able to stand up and do it anyway separates the people who make the impact from the people who don't. So I encourage you to be real, be yourself and just show up in a big way vulnerably for other people and give them the inspiration they need in order to get to that next level. I know that in talking and telling my story that there may be people out there who identify with it. They, they may say, oh man, I, I was climbing a corporate ladder as well and it didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped it would. And when you are able to share those messages with other people, that's when human connection really happens. That's when people are able to say, I get her or I understand that or that makes sense to me and that's how people learn it's a and and really how we contribute in this world sweet yes indeed yes indeed because that's something we all seek to do whether it's consciously or unconsciously is to at least make a good contribution to the planet absolutely so if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2020 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, I think, I think that a lot of people are trying to fake it till you make it. And that really just ends up with a whole bunch of people faking it in the world. And I, I think that if I was to go back and tell my 20 year old self something, it would be don't worry, everybody's faking it. The best difference you can make is to not do that, is to just be who you are in the world as authentically as you possibly can. And don't take yourself so seriously. You do wanna show up in a, in a professional way, in a professional setting, but at the same time, you wanna be sure that, that you show up as your human self and not some sort of shell inside armor, inside a protective covering that everything's fine, everything's perfect, I've got it all together. Because if you show up that way, everybody else will look at you one of two ways. If you show up and you, th you think you have all of your stuff together and you show up as that, then there will be 50% or thereabouts of the people in the room who will say, wow, she's got her act together. I could never be like that because I don't have my act together. And the other 50% of the people will be in the room thinking, wow, she's full of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not doing anybody a service to put on that armor and show up in a, in a protective suit like you have everything together. You've got to show up in a way that's real and authentic and you and doing what you love to do. So that's what I would tell my 20-year-old self. And from that, I actually built sort of a mnemonic 
and that is to get on the road to joy. And the road to joy is an abbreviation, four letters it indicate other things, but R is relish. If you relish it, then keep doing it. If you love talking to clients, then keep doing that. If you love servicing your clients, fantastic. If you love networking, wonderful. If you, whatever you love doing, if you love getting on stages, if you love writing books, whatever you love doing, keep doing that. Do as much of it as you possibly can because your love for it is going to drive you. And then in business, if you have other things that you don't love, my suggestion is that they fall into one of three other categories. So R is for relish. The other letters in road are O, A, and D, and they stand for outsource, automate, and delegate. Meaning get it off your plate as quickly as possible. Find other people that love to do those things. If you are not a tax professional, why are you spending time fooling around doing your taxes yourself. Find somebody who can really do it better than you, faster than you, and more amazingly than you, and let them do it because they love it, and partner with them in a way that works for you, and go back to doing what you love. You'll end up happier in this world, and you'll end up serving more people in the way that you were meant to serve. Ah, yes, indeed. Mic drop and the James Brown row goes over shoulders, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. I love your style, Dom. <laughs> ah, yes, indeed. Rare case we're here, an acronym for road, and I love that one. Definitely the delegation piece. That's something a lot of folks need to work on. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. So with all of your mass knowledge and experience and folks want to get more of it, what's the best way for folks to reach out to the kind Kimberly yourself? Well, you can definitely join the community because we would love to see and hear from you and have you be seen and heard in a bigger way. So our community is Entrepreneurs Rocket Fuel, and you can find that on Facebook. You can also go to entrepreneursrocketfuel.com and you can go to entrepreneursrocketfield.com forward slash Facebook and go directly to the community. Of course, you can go to the website as well, and there's contact information on there. We would love for you to check out our podcast and our radio show, which is Entrepreneurs Experts Cafe. And I also have a YouTube channel under Entrepreneurs Rocket Fuel as well. If you're looking to grow your business and launch it to new heights, there's some great tips and tricks and lessons from other entrepreneurs, six-figure earners, seven-figure earners, all kinds of people who have been through the wall that you can learn from and not make the same mistakes they did in order to miss some of those bumps in the road. Well, there you have it, folks. Check out the Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel, especially that YouTube page. Uh, especially love that video about reviving dead leads. My goodness. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, indeed. Collecting all sorts of business cards and you're like, who the heck is this? Well, if you want to figure out who to, what to do with who the heck is this, definitely check out that video and other fabulous content on that page. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So any parting words for the folks still listening, Kimberly? I will only say I, I think it's very important that you as an entrepreneur or as an author that you get out there, find a stage, be seen, be heard, get on a podcast, contact Dom, see if you can get a spot in on his podcast, contact the podcast owners of other places, see if you can get out there and get your voice heard because our voice matters. And I am a big fan of the phrase live life out loud. Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North Podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation. 